Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Chronic Nirvana. In today's episode, we talk about something different. Today, we're going to delve into the reality and the life behind people in the adult entertainment industry. And to do that with us, we have a very special guest. We've got Verity from UK. So say hi, Verity. Hi, guys. How are you? So lovely. <laughs> I'm, I'm great. And it's so great to have you on the show. And, um, you know, I just want to say that it was really crazy how um, I actually ended up texting. It was actually off of Curl's um, show. After, after I saw you on his live, um, I was like, oh shit, this chick's crazy. So I went, <laughs> so I just saw that and I was like, yo, I'll, I'll, the, the theme just looks completely different compared to, you know, most of the other, most of the other girls on his show, right? So, um, mm-hmm. so the weird thing was I saw that and uh, I ended up commenting on one of her pictures just for the lull. You know, I've always wanted to have a very real and very realistic and true conversation with people in the adult industry. I think I can speak for Daksha and myself that we've been avid consumers of adult <laughs> entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That makes me happy. Um, That's good. You know, when you see a lot of people on camera or on screen, you know, my personal thing was I've always wanted to know more about them. You know, they just seem like really cool people. Because contrary <laughs> to what like other people would say, they um. People would end up watching um, Hours of Lisa Ann or Celesta or whatever and go like, yeah, I- I'd want to bone them. And in my head, I'm like, I would, but I'd probably like to chill with them and probably bake, smoke some weed, go for a drink, probably do <laughs> yeah, a bunch to know of them other fast. activities and actually just, they just seem like really fun people to talk to because, and that's something that a lot of people don't realize. I'm really glad that we could have you on the show because this is something I envision that I'd be doing years down the line. So to have to have you on the show to talk to us and to talk about something that not a lot of people know about, but may have just seen a very superficial life about and getting to know what's behind the camera, what's what happens to the person behind and off camera. So I'm really glad that we have you here with us. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, what we're really interested in is, you know, Verity, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? I mean, um, how'd you start? Just a little something that we can get to know about you. Well, I have, I've had a very interesting life so far. Um, I used to be in the circus. I used to be in the traveling circus for a few years. Um, yeah. I was like the star of the show. I did swinging trapeze and like slack rope and all these crazy stuff. And then I decided I'd had enough of the circus. It, it was really hard work. It didn't pay me enough. And I was like, I want to try something else. And then I came out of the circus. I had nothing to my name. I had I had a car and, and some things. And that was it. I was homeless for a little bit. I lived out of my car. I was like really trying to figure out my next move. And then I decided, I was like, mm, I'm going to go and work in a strip club. I'd never really thought about being a stripper. It's not something I really had if you asked me three years ago you're going to be a stripper I'd be like yeah okay um but I'm so glad I did I just randomly went up to this this tiny little club it can't it can't be any bigger than like a house it was so small and uh I had so much fun I was so nervous um and I pretty much just haven't looked back and um so from there I went into like fetish stuff like you know, BDSM, pouring hot candle wax all over myself, and I work in uh, Soho, an amazing club. Yeah, it does. I'm from the circus. I, I, there's nothing I haven't done, honestly. I have no fear anymore. Um, so, yeah, I work in, in London clubs, which is so much fun, and that just, you know, that allowed me to meet so many more interesting people in the scene, like transgenders and like like all these crazy people covered in tattoos and like uh, c- tying themselves up with rope and hanging themselves from the ceiling. Um, so then my love for the industry just grew from there. And then obviously the last month, it's just completely changed. Like everything I do is online now. I do all my fetish stuff online. I'm now an online uh, webcam girl. So I do obviously sex work online, stripping, custom videos. Like everything at the moment is online because... All the sex workers are obviously using their brains and thinking, well, we're stuck at home, so let's just move everything online, you know? 
Yeah. So what's the schedule enough. like with the whole quarantine in effect? So you do say you you work <laughs> uh, online. So wh- how how has that impacted your work and your leisure schedule? Like at well, for, well, okay. So when I work at the strip club, obviously I work nights. You know, I'll work from nine p.m. and I won't get home until you know sometimes five or six, and then I won't mm. go to bed until seven a.m. Um, which for me it's okay. I, I'm definitely more of a a daytime person than a nighttime person okay. so I do struggle with it um but yeah it's been really nice to work in the daytime you know and getting to bed at like 11 p.m so mm-hmm. I thought I'm gonna enjoy the fact that I am stuck at home I get up and I just have some breakfast have a coffee and then I'll go through all my online stuff all my social medias reply to everyone as much as I can um and then I'll film some content like I'm dressed uh, right now to go to the studio next door and film okay. um, some stuff on the pole uh, yeah I just try and keep all my content as interesting as possible because I, I don't have the opportunity to go to the club or go to the strip club or just anything like that it's, it's all going to a standstill um, <laughs> but I am on my own which is uh, it's quite difficult <laughs> <laughs> and with, I know a lot of businesses fallen, etc. You know, are, are you are you still able to do business? It's kind of it's really difficult to kind of put into perspective. It's like same as the strip club. I mean, people will say yeah. to me, "Oh, what do you earn in the strip club?" Um, which is not something you should really say to a stripper, FYI. Just so <laughs> fans know, don't ask a stripper what she makes. It's it's rude. Um, <laughs> so no, as, I mean, when I go to the strip club, it's so. Like it's not guaranteed. Like okay. I, I might go to work and have two guys come in the club and spend loads of money, mm-hmm. or the next uh, next day someone might come in and you know I might get fifty guys in, but they don't spend any money, and that's just how okay. it works in the industry. Okay. Um, and it's kind of the same online. I, I think it's easier to kind of get in people's faces and, and be like, mm-hmm. and the the po- the um the the pro to that is that I can basically send out. A message to so many people at the same time whereas right. in the strip club I have to do it one at a time and I have to sell yeah. myself and I go on stage and I dance and I guess it's it's really it's really organic online I guess because mm-hmm. not only can I just be myself and if I make a mistake I'm like I'll delete that and I'll <laughs> do it again and you know, I you that, do that and there's that personal touch to it however literally or figuratively you want to take that but there is that personal sort of um, touch to the, to the job that you have I think while you do it online yeah, I mean, when I first started in the industry, I um, I mean, I guess you could consider me as an alt girl, an alternative girl, and there wasn't very many girls I, I knew. If, if you don't mind me asking you, would you mind describing what that means to anyone who listens? How, how, what um, you I mean, to me, to me, it means, you know, tattoos and piercings and, uh, and uh, colorful hair, face piercings, stuff like that, you know, not... Hey, you know, you, am I old? I've got, I've got, I've got ink. I mean, I think I'm part of the tribe. I'm part of the crew. I'm a half stripper as well. So, you know. from the, from the like before I went online, before I brought all my work online, I didn't, I didn't think about who I was or what, mm-hmm. je- like what style I had. I was just me. I didn't care. I just went to work and, you know, I, I, I had my own style. It wasn't until I moved online, I was like, oh, okay, you could say that you could put me in that type of box, but I'm a bit of a chameleon. I can do the kind of innocent look. I can do the, like, really rocky look, and then I'll do some just, like, crazy look. Or I can just be, like, you know, one of those glamour models just without the big tits and big ups. I can – I'll try. I'll try and do as much as I can. But, um, I mean, when I first started in the industry – it was it was quite refreshing because I worked in very big clubs in London that had a very big right. reputation and the girls in that club were very like Victoria's Secret and like Playboy looking girls, you know. So I stroll in with my tattoos and my piercings, my dark makeup and, and stuff like that. Um, and I used to do like fire shows and things for these clubs. Wow, and um, yeah, and then the last year I've seen so many alt alternative girls and like different looking girls working in the club which has been so refreshing um i mean the club i work at that you've got literally whatever girl you want it's in there like we have big girls skinny girls curvy girls wow. you know european girls black girls like anything asian girls and i i, mm-hmm. I love it the entire menu, like the entire menu. just <laughs> Yeah, just give you a menu. What would you? What are you feeling today? You I have an Asian with a side of thigh. 
<laughs> and it's great because we all get along. We all have this crazy atmosphere at work. And, you know, and this is in Milton Keynes, a club called Garuda. If anyone's in the area, come check us out when it's all open. Um, yeah, so when I worked in London, I was so depressed and I was low and I was questioning myself and I felt really, like, self-conscious because all these girls were, like, very perfect looking. You know, they had their face done and, like, some girls were just so naturally, like, glamorous and they had these expensive lingerie sets on and stuff like that and they just gave off this very like i'm up here yeah. and you're down there kind uh -huh. of feeling that, that superiority um, complex yeah and i guess yeah. that there has to be some respect when you go to a club you know you are going to get the girls that have worked there for years and you have to you know respect them and you know it is their territory and they have their customers and which i was very respectful but i just didn't mm. feel like oh. accepted there so is it is it some sort of like do you, is there so is there like territory rules as such like okay that guy is mine you don't go near him or like you know um, you sort of I mean, mark certain kind of customers. An unspoken rule. I mean, I there's definitely you're gonna get a guy come in and he's gonna have a favorite girl. It, it happens in uh -huh. every club. Like I had a few regulars in my old club, but you, I mean, in London it was very like don't even look at him. You know, it was very like it was very oh, wow. strict. Yeah. I felt like there was a lot of unwritten rules that. I seem to be breaking without nobody telling me. Um, but no, like when I when I joined this club in, in MK and in Garuda, I, there was, you know, you had the regular customers that were coming for certain girls, but there wouldn't be any like maliciousness. Like if a customer wanted to take me, but he was known to be this girl's regular, there's no fighting and stuff. She's like, yeah, go for it, make your money. And that's how it needs to be in this industry. That's cool. You yeah. know, yeah. Uh, girls just supporting girls. And, and the yeah. more I work in the industry, the more like, like confident and I get I get I guess and I just uplifting other girls and you know it's 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 becoming a real popular thing I think it's really empowering you know it's it's, it's not really empowering I I love it and I love my girls at the club and yeah. you know I've worked at so many different clubs and to be honest the main problem I've had is with either management or or people that work there but not so much the girls because we're all in the same position we all mm. have a very very hard job to do and you know the last thing you want to do is bring another girl down because you don't even have, you don't have time for that honestly like we're having so much fun and we're just like you know partying with the guys is you know there's no point arguing with anybody yeah sounds like an interesting job interesting life and it's not an every profession that you know women have that sort of community where they empower each other and all that Usually in a business setting, for example, it's, you know, who can rise to the top. It's very case. cutthroat. Yeah. Very it cutthroat. can be. It can be very cutthroat. And, you know, especially when you have a quiet time, like if you've got a couple of weeks, it's really quiet in the club and everyone's obviously trying to make money because we're all self-employed. Nobody pays us. We have to rely on the customers to, to make our money. Sure. So, you know, if we have a couple of weeks that are quiet in the club, um, it can be it can be like a competition you know because we're all just trying to make money but um it can be quite cutthroat but in the sense that you just have to go for it and you have to, you have to talk to that customer and you have to just try and like make yourself known in the club because when mm -hmm. i first started i was so shy i didn't want to talk to anyone i was like i'll just sit here until a customer talks to me and then oh, wow. slowly like you build up that confidence and you get girls in the club going come on get up Get up and make that money. You go, girl. Like, you know. Um, and I love that about the community. I think it's amazing. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Um, yeah, and it's happening online now. Like, these girls have, they've grouped together. I mean, there's there's a, an online strip uh, club now called Cybertees on Instagram. If you check okay. those guys out, they're doing an incredible job right now. It's run by strippers. Um, you, I think you pay like 20 pounds or something just to be a part of the show. You can tip the girls virtually. Wow. And again, there's a whole range of different girls, big girls, small girls, and however. Um, and I just, I think it's amazing. Like strippers are just like breaking through and they're making their money and they're not letting all of this corona and everything get them down. Mm -hmm. And they're just building each other up. It's great. Right. And they're entertaining that they're in one of the forms of entertainment that's going to be in the highest demand now more than ever because, you know, everything's work from home. So there's no question of NSFW. Like, you could be working on financial models and just have only fans like pop that right yeah, there. So exactly. there's, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. But, you know, I, I want to cycle back to, you know, um, so you got in, you went and you worked in the circus, then you went in to stripping. <laughs> now, um, would you say that a lot of your colleagues as well uh, get in? 
to that hustle of having like an OnlyFans or doing something online along with your main profession, which is you know dancing. Like, is it just yeah. you, or how many people get into it, and what's what's that business like? You know, it's crazy. I mean, I started my OnlyFans like six months ago, like before before any of this kind of happened, and I just kind of at the time I was like, well, um, I think I, I can't remember what happened. I think I, I I hurt my my knee or something, or I think I fractured my rib. I don't know. I had an injury, and I was like, oh, I need to think of something that's gonna be a side hustle, like something that's gonna of keep course. me yeah. going if anything happens to me and I can't work at the club and I can work from home if need to be. I guess it was like a subconscious, like, Corona is happening, you better get in there. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I started on OnlyFans, like not really thinking much of it. And then obviously the last month it's just completely blown up. Like a lot of the girls are moving online. Uh, like me personally, I'm on OnlyFans. I'm on two different webcam sites, uh, three actually, three different webcam sites. And then I obviously do like custom videos to people. Um, on Instagram, Twitter, like everything, I try, I try and get. Um, what's that like, though? I mean, uh, when you say, uh, what's the difference between OnlyFans and the other cam websites? Like, what's that difference? What's the difference between what webcam and OnlyFans? Yeah, the, yeah, OnlyFans and the other webcam sites. What's what's the difference between the two? Um, things? I guess you can think of the way I see it is that it's an explicit Instagram. Basically, it's you, it's your page, it's your photos, it's all you. Um, you can go okay. live if you want to, like you can on Instagram. Um, I mean, my content varies from dancing to explicit close-up stuff, um, like, you know, fetish, BDSM, I've got feet stuff, like, whatever you're into, I, I just try and, I love, like, people's fetishes and fantasies, and I love it when ah. people tell me new things. I'm like, okay, I'll do that, and I'll put it on my page for you. Um, uh. But yeah, I know a lot of girls that are now moving online. I mean, I've got, I'm in a group right now with a lot of my friends from work, and we message each other in the morning, mm. like, have you got some new content today? Like, again, just building each other up. Like, Make sure you get online and message your fans and get on there. And, you know, we'll bounce ideas off each other. Like, oh, I want to do a schoolgirl thing today, guys. What do you think I should do? Like, And then we'll just bounce off each other's ideas. And it can be a very personal thing. Like, for me, I, I like to do it on my own, but with the help of and the, the confidence from my friends. But I know a few people, they'll go to an agency and there's agencies if you want to right. do online work as well. Um, but for me, I'm very personal with my stuff and I'm like, I know how I want it to look. So I'm mm. going to do it my way, which is a slower way of doing it because you're the only one having to grow it organically. So I have to build it up on my own by myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's great. I, I, I really like seeing more and more girls do it. I mean, there is a, there is a thing... I think there are a few people that are upset because the people that have only been online and only done their stuff online feel a little bit like their toes are being tr trod on a little because all the all these other girls and all these dancers are now coming online. But the way I see it is there's enough money in the world. There's enough mm -hmm. people in the world. There's enough Yeah, to go exactly, around. yeah. You know. But there's that undeniable thing that the market share of certain people do go down and then, you know, that, that's part, you, there's nothing you can do about it at, at the end of the day, you know, like if you've got a high enough demand, like it's basic economics, if you've got a high enough demand, uh, demand in time, you're going to have a high enough supply, there's nothing you can do about it, you know, you just, exactly. you suck it up and, and you just say, I'm going to, yeah, and you just say, I'm going to suck it up, I'm going to try and make my product or whatever I sell good and I'm going to try and get people. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, you're like, fans are like you know the particular people who like your stuff and then exactly you know, and I mean I don't I I've been you know building mine up the last six months and just recently it's it's blown up because obviously I went on Kirill and I went on Swarms Live and yeah. you know as I said I've had I've had a lot of negativity and I've had a lot of positivity like a lot of my fans are in America and they they, they love what I do they think I'm crazy they think I you know I, I mean I did a live show the other day and I put one bloody fountain sparklers in my pussy and I lit it on fire and I was like, yeah, like, <laughs> like isn't that a fire hazard <laughs> obviously I like to make money I'm a stripper I like I like the way I earn my money it's, it, it's my way but at the moment everyone is so down everyone's stuck at home and I just want to like have fun I'm like come on guys just come to my page you know I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll give you all half price I know you're all broke as fuck right now <laughs> come to my page have a party and let's just have fun like I like yeah. to do stuff that that makes me feel good like I I will never do a job that I don't enjoy doing mm -hmm. yeah. and this is I'm really really enjoying the online stuff right now like a lot 
um, I'm yeah. really glad to hear that. You know, you don't hear the side of like so many people you just see on the internet, and then you have no idea, like you know, their backstory and you know how they came about doing it. Yeah. They, you know. I actually really find that really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I it is. That- it's really interesting because it's it's like when I was in the circus, right? It's very secretive industry. Like you you don't hear a lot from circus people because um, they like to keep themselves to themselves they put on a show but then you don't know what goes on back backstage yeah, yeah. you don't see what's behind the curtain but the circus that i was in we completely like turned the whole circus the traditional circus like 180 and we actually did the show as a backstage show if that makes sense yeah so instead of you seeing the circus it was you'd see the backstage of the circus it was really interesting and i just think it's you know people don't see the backside of, of stripping and sex industry and, and sex workers and stuff. And there's so much like taboo against it still. And there's so many misconceptions, like thinking that we're all like, you know, druggies that have daddy issues. I'm like, that's not who we are. <laughs> we are very confident, very clever, very smart, money making yeah. girls and boys and trans. I mean, everyone's in yeah. the industry now and I fucking love it. Like, I've met some of the strongest, like, smartest, savviest, like, people I've ever met in, in the sex industry. Because they have to put up with a, we have to put up with a lot of shit, you can imagine. Because there's still so much to do behind it. Yeah, yeah. They must be really street smart, you know? You can't mess with them. You can't. Yeah, yeah! You don't mess with me! Um, yeah. yeah, it's good. It's, 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 um, it's definitely the most empowering job I've ever had. And it's, it's really testing. Um, it's very testing on the mind, on the body, like, oh god, you should, the way we work in the club, like, we're on, I mean, where are they? <laughs> oh, geez, that just people. looks, that looks painful to wear, like. <laughs> I mean, these are pleasers, and they're made for strippers, and they're quite comfortable, but, you know, when you do wear them up to sometimes 12 hours, it, oh, it can hurt. Whilst being graceful, whilst selling, whilst, you know, potentially being grabbed by some guy, you know, it's, it's a very, very hard job, but I, I'm so glad that I'm a part of it. That's awesome. Betty, I wanted to ask, uh, so like some of my friends are getting into like pole dancing and whatnot, and mm-hmm. uh, I heard there's a lot of technique and there's a lot of core strength involved in this. Uh, how, how do you go about learning to pole dance? Or like, you know, did you go training or is it something that um, you actually came from the circus days? Yeah. <laughs> I know everyone says that they're like oh you know must be great on the pole because you're in the circus but honestly when I became a stripper I hadn't even touched a pole I had no idea what I was oh, doing wow. I was like I have strength I know I have strength but god knows it, it is a lot of technique yeah. um and it's funny because a lot of strippers I know they started as a stripper and learned the tricks and then a lot because pole is obviously getting very very popular right now yeah. there's a lot of girls that are now they've learnt the pole and then become a stripper so they've already got the skills which i think is quite interesting um but for me i just i just used to pester girls at the club like oh oh teach me that yeah. teach me that because like you'd get you'd get a lot of free time in the club like when it's early like 9 p.m nobody's uh-huh. in the club so we'd all just like gather on the stage and just teach each other tricks and no. stuff but don't you need to put up some sort of audition before you go in like if you didn't know how to pole dance as much like then the guys recruiting you you know i think it's just about it depends. It depends what club. So, like, you get the smaller clubs, um, like outside of London in the small towns. Uh-huh. Like, they're, they're not, they're not so much with the auditioning. Um, I think they're just open to having different girls in their clubs, and as long as you're not a total lunatic, like they'll have you basically. Uh-huh. Um, but in London, they're very, they are more strict. Like mm-hmm. in the the club I worked at, um, a, a few different ones, but um. Yeah, you had to, you, not so much tricks, but you had to definitely have some sort of rhythm on stage. So uh-huh. they'd sit down, they'd literally be watching you like a judge panel, and you'd have to go <laughs> on stage and have the songs. And the first song you have to dance in your dress or whatever, and then the second song you have to be like topless. And obviously the first time doing that, it was so nerve-wracking, and I was like, oh my God, I'm just about to take my top off to these random strangers that I've never met in my life. Simon um, <laughs> that was so Simon, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> random Simon just there like, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to hit that yeah, like, that one. Like, okay. <laughs> and I was so nervous because they, they just seemed, again, they just seemed like they were up here and I was down there, and I didn't really <laughs> like them. But I am a believer of um, you shouldn't, 
you should go through an audition process, you know, mm -hmm. um, or at least like a trial process because the, the, the stripping industry can be so tough. I mean, I've seen girls come and go because they, they either like the idea of stripping or, or they're a good pole dancer and you can be the best dancer in the world, but it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to make money because yeah, really. this country, we're not a tipping country. We don't tip like you do in America. Uh -huh. So in the strip clubs in the UK, you have to know how to sell. You have to sell. You have to be good okay. with your words. You have to be, you know, a, just a good salesman because you're, you know, uh -huh. you're selling yourself. You're selling yourself to them. You can't just go on the stage because that's the mistake I made. I was very graceful. I had good rhythm. I'd go on the stage and then I'd come down and nobody would look at me. I was like, oh, okay. Well, okay, it's not the dancing. And then over time, you build it up and you're like, okay, so if I do a good stage show and then you come down, you're like, hey, did you see my show? <laughs> good, let's go for a dance. Like, you have to have that kind of, like, spirit. Oh, yeah. Whatever style that you have, you know? And it takes it's effort. Not it takes effort because I think that's, that's the point where you actually need to personally socialize with people for them to actually recognize you in what you're doing. So... So that, you know, once you build that yeah. personal rapport, they can see you. Like, you don't have to sell yourself off of that. After that, they're already tuned in into whatever you do, you know. Um, yeah. But, I mean, over yeah. time, you, you know, you're like, uh, you know, you pick the good songs that are going to grab people's attention. Or, yeah. like, a lot of strippers, they'll climb up the pole and then they'll, like, slide down and slam their feet on the stage and make, like, a big noise. And obviously, mm -hmm. that'll get people's attention. Of course, yeah. You know, just, just little things like that. And then you do a great stage show. And that obviously, that just adds to the fact that you're going to make money yeah. because people will recognize you and, like, oh, yeah, I really liked your stage show, by the way. You look, you look really hot, um, which obviously helps, but you can make just as much money not dancing at all, really. So, um, the, you know, obviously, uh, another thing I just wanted to ask you about was, we talked about how the whole people look down at this like it's taboo, right? Yeah. Um, as Indians, we know quite a lot of it in the sense that, you know, if, like, you know, there's a lot of people that get shunned from society for way more things. It's not just tripping or sex that's taboo. Which I think is really fucked up in India, considering that we've got the Kama Sutra from like India. Like, I don't know how you yeah. guys are talking. I was having this conversation yesterday as well. You know, <laughs> I was like, it is quite ironic, don't you think? They're like, yeah, it really is. <laughs> and funnily enough, India is one of the world's highest consumers of pornography. Like, they're the top, the top three, if I'm not mistaken. And oh wow! I didn't know that. Okay, and now I have to be basing all my content now. Then, exactly. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we're, we're doing we're doing the Lord's work. We're sharing some entertaining content to a bunch of holy. <laughs> Trust me, this is going to blow up. <laughs> but um, no. So, speaking of uh, getting shunned from society, what not? So how how would how was your journey with respect to that? Like, what about your parents and family and close friends? What was the reaction from them when you decided to get into the business? Do you know what? I have a very supportive family. I'm very lucky like that. I mean, my, my dad is not around. My dad has no idea that I do this, but that is what it is. Uh -huh. But my mom is really, you know, she's very respectful. She's so proud of me. Like, just because I've always done what I wanted to do and I've always, you know... There is a couple of people in my family who are like, why don't you just get a real job? Why don't you just get a job that's guaranteed money and stop messing around and doing this? And I'm like, no, because I don't enjoy that. I mean, there are people that enjoy working in an office and working for this person. But honestly, I don't like to work for anyone except myself because I have only myself to blame if it goes wrong mm -hmm. um, and I can do what I want to do. And if it doesn't work, I'm like, oh, okay, push that away and we'll move on to the next thing you can't really do that with a with a, a normal job uh -huh. but um yeah i'm very lucky in the respect that my family are very supportive and they they uh, they respect what i do and they respect that it's a it's a real job <laughs> yeah no i mean i love the fact that people do at least close family think a little more progressively on that note yeah you know what's really funny uh, verity like uh i do music right and if i wanted to take that as a profession it's frowned upon by my family for no bizarre, like whatever bizarre reason, yeah. they're like, get a real job and whatnot. So it's awesome to see how cultures react to this, like, not the same thing, but like, you know, mm. in the entertainment industry, as a, as a broad caveat, like, you know, how people react differently to it in terms of yeah. a support and, and how, like, you know, people in that entertainment industry react to each other. So it's awesome. It's, it was an eye-opening experience. Yeah, 
like here well, i just feel like stuff like that it's 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 always going to come from the top you know it's going to come mm -hmm. from the media it's going to come from the government it's going to come from what what you are groomed yeah. to be seen you know like if you watch like one of my favorite programs is family guy right uh -huh. but they the way they show strippers is fucking awful like the uh -huh. way they, they say that strippers don't have souls and stuff like that but yeah. i still find it funny because i just i don't care <laughs> but you know you have to you have to understand that you know, there are countries that are just a little bit behind on that and they, they don't understand it yet. And they pro I hope they will one day. But, you know, I was I was talking to someone the other day and I was like, you know, there wouldn't be, there would probably still be, but there wouldn't be as much, you know, sex trafficking, uh, sex trafficking and, you know, all these, all these horrible things that you hear, there wouldn't be as much of that if uh, sex work was just made legal. Because if it's made legal, then it's, it's that person's choice whether they do it or not. Yeah. And, and not to they mention the many benefits that it actually brings to an economy, right? Like when you actually regulate it and people have to pay money, you, you, you're taxed on it and there's so many things that come out of it. You're going to see a yeah. lot less of all that trafficking and, you know, the things become a little more transparent and you have that sense of identity that you can be proud of, you know? So, um, I mean, more power there. I just hope that someday that our generation can bring that to India. Definitely, you know, I'd rather people be safe and do it rather than being forced or put in unsafe work environments. And that's yeah. and it's, definitely, it's definitely the industry is, is growing and I'm, I'm glad to see it growing, but you know, we're, we're still not that, we're still not that far ahead yet. I mean, I, I know quite a few girls that wouldn't dare tell their parents or <laughs> their parents don't know that they do, or sometimes their boyfriends don't even know they do it. You know, and it's, it's really sad because I Boyfriend? feel like you shouldn't, you shouldn't ever have to hide that. You're not hurting oh. anybody. So. Boyfriends? How, how do you keep that life a secret from your boyfriend? Like, how? Like, what sort of life are you doing? I have no idea, but it's just because, like, I mean, I, I have, I've had one relationship whilst doing this job. Uh -huh. and it was really really difficult and there was a moment he did try and understand it but I just think because it's still seen as such a taboo like you said not enough people actually know what goes on not enough people uh -huh. actually understand people still have this crazy idea that we're like doing awful things in the club and like taking loads of drugs and stuff I was like it's not like that we're entertainers like yeah, yeah so um he really tried he really tried to understand at one point but then it just got he, he got super like insecure and really jealous and I was like that's my job I'm coming home to you like you know I go there and I do my job and I, I'm entertaining people you know and then I come home do you know what I mean like it I don't un for me I don't understand why it's so hard to understand but for some people, it really is. And, you know, I think there are still a lot of sex workers that struggle with that. And there are a lot of just normal people or people that know sex workers that really struggle with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just, it doesn't need to be that deep. It's not that deep. Like, we're just doing our jobs. It's just, a, it's just what, a different kind of job. What you said about the whole um, substance uh, consuming sort of top uh, assumption uh, I actually saw a video that Johnny about that featuring Johnny since like it since it's his YouTube channel, right? And I find this YouTube thing really cool because that's what really showed me. It opened my eyes to a lot more that you know these guys are humans too. They're not just people who they're not just dicks. They're not just vaginas or you know there's there's so much more to yeah. them. And the fact that they just open up they open a YouTube channel where they just have random Q and A's etc. And it's so interactive and nice that you actually see another side of it that you actually find equally entertaining. You know. Like, there's a point where, like, I mean, uh, me being me, after all my years of, like, you know, how many years I've been watching porn or whatnot, I've reached that point where things have kind of saturated a bit for me. So when I see um, more people doing more interactive things, I'm kind of a little more intrigued by that because I'm just like, I've seen enough penetration. I've seen every kind of penetration. <laughs> like, exactly. You know, I mean, I think that's why I'm really enjoying like, it. And I'm really enjoying the online stuff because it's not only like whoever I meet in the club is just whoever comes in the club. Like yeah. in London, obviously they are very far ahead and they are accepting of so many things. Mm -hmm. Like I, I perform with trans and like all these crazy people and right. they've got, you know, imagine like RuPaul's drag race, but mixed with fetish and like anything that you can imagine it's in right. London. Right. Yeah. So outside of London where I work in Milton Keynes, I mean, if I, if I meet someone in the club that has a fetish or a fantasy, like that's, that's just them. But online I can reach so many people yeah. and I'm obsessed with people's fantasies and fetishes. And I'm always like, tell me, tell me what you like. What are you into? And they're always a bit like, mm. I'm like, seriously, 
no judgment. I want to know. I want, I want to fulfill your fantasy. Because some people are just so embarrassed, so embarrassed to tell anyone what their fantasy is. Like, yeah. but everyone has a fantasy. Everyone has a fetish. And, you know, yeah. if you've got some place to go, I mean, it just makes you feel so much more empowered because so many people, like, I've spoken to so many guys that were like, oh my God, I've been waiting to tell someone about that for years. Uh -huh. I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad you did. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. I don't know yeah. why sex is so hard to talk about. Like yeah. people would rather talk about, oh, I don't even know, like Boys serial sex. killers and, and, and like, and. Or even oh, worse, just gossip. People are so, boy, uh, people are just so uh, involved in what's happening in other people's lives. They keep talking about other people and what they've done and their shortcomings, but you know, they're just yeah. free to address their own shortcomings or their own problems and their own things that they want to get out rather than just contain in themselves and let that, you know, become toxic inside them. So, yeah. uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, even when I did the, um, cause my, my, my social media is blow, like for me, it's blown up. I started with like a hundred followers. That's why I always, you know, I'll try and follow everyone back and I'll try and like, you know, re was not, it's not called retweet, um, like put their page on my story and stuff because I was that person uh -huh. and it is really hard to build up your social media yeah. but when I did the swarms live and when I did Kirill's video I got so much hate from um, actually girls that I used to work with like strippers that I used to work with no way. and they honestly were like they were they were saying I was giving a bad name to stripping and yeah. I said I said some um, some like oh I'm like Kirill right Kirill yeah. says a bunch of shit and there are a lot of people that hate him, but it doesn't stop him because he's just having fun. Like me, I don't care. Like, yeah. if you don't like what I do, I'm not hurting you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not actually going out my way to personally hurt your feelings. Uh -huh. If you don't yeah. like it, don't look at it. If you don't yeah. like it, just turn it off, click it off. Like, they exactly. actually 100%. came and found me and found my other page and found Kirill's video and found Swan's video just to give me hate. I'm like, wow. Yeah. People have too much time on their hands to <laughs> They just have way too much time on their hands to You're so obsessed with me. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, any part is for good publicity. So, you know. <laughs> but any press is, is good press, right? So, exactly. Yeah. It just, uh, the thing that I kind of just deviated off of was just a small thing that like Johnny Sins talked about how um, people, do, like he personally doesn't consume any sort of drugs because it actually inhibits performance because you know, when you're shooting videos, you're shooting, you're on a set for like eight hours or nine hours and stuff like cocaine, like actually people think it gets you energized, but actually gives you a limp tick. You can't get it up. And oh, it's very bad. If you want to have sex, it's, it's probably good for the girls. I've not actually tried it with sex. I might do, but um, <laughs> no, I, I've, I've heard it's, it's, if you want to have sex and you're a dude, like just don't do coke. <laughs> exactly. So there's just stuff like that. But, um, the other thing I wanted to ask you was, um, how would you go, I mean, right now you're, you're in stripping, etc. So you've, we've established it. You know, a lot of people do have turned to online entertainment as a form of side hustle. So what's mm -hmm. the, how would you define the gap or that jump between stripping and online entertainment to like, you know, on screen porn? Like what's the, what's the difference? Are you, is that something you're considering? Would you, or would you not do it? What do you see as the difference between the two of them? I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I guess it's, it's, it depends how you, how do you depict porn? Like, you know, I, you could say that I'm, I do porn because I fuck myself online. And I've, I've done a one video where I was, uh, you know, kissing my friend and like, we were playing around with like toys and stuff, which is on my OnlyFans and she's on there too. You know, it, it kind of depends. Like in my head, porn is like porn, like, you know, porn stars and like having, three guys come in and like fuck the shit out of me which the more I do this job and the more I'm alone and the more my fucking sex drive goes up I'm like I think I could do that I could definitely uh -huh. get paid to get fucked I mean who doesn't want to get paid to get fucked come on yeah I, I um, like people look down at that so negatively but the way I'd see it like someone comes and tells you hey we're gonna give you a bunch of pussy just just I'm yeah like, I mean, if that. someone comes up to you like I'll give you a hundred pounds to go down on you right now I'd be like uh <laughs> <laughs> but you'd be stupid. But I understand that people don't. I don't. I understand that people don't understand it, basically. But yeah, my view. This is just my opinion. But I'm like, if I go clubbing, which I don't really like to do anymore. If I go clubbing, I will see at least one girl get fucking drunk and potentially go home with some dude that she does not know. 
Now mm-hmm. that to me is awful and really scary actually. I've never done that. I, I don't think I could ever do that. But yeah. I've never been a prostitute. But if I was I would much rather go down the prostitute way than go down, I'm just going to get drunk and go home with some guy. Do you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. the negativity I've got is mainly from girls like that, Uh that are like, you're disgusting for what you do. I'm like, Rebecca, Mm -hmm. I don't know Rebecca, but I'm like, Rebecca, Mm -hmm. I've seen you go to the club and I've seen you get fucking drunk and I've seen you go home with some dude you don't even fucking know. Why don't you shut your mouth? At least I'm getting paid for it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, (laughs) So you don't do so, so, so it's 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 so that you don't so much misunderstanding. It's so frustrating. So you don't do yeah. random hookups or like so you don't just go see a guy go like I wanna fuck you, just take the guy back. Fuck it. You no, like I'm I'm with sex I'm quite personal. Okay. Like I would probably I would love to do it with friends. Like people that I know, if I said to my, my guy friends, like, hey, come around and like fuck me and I'll film it and like we'll play around and like I want to get some BDSM videos done I want to have like you know point of view shots with me like being slapped and like tied up and stuff I do want to do that stuff but I you know prostitution is like another is like a a whole different spectrum of its own which I know quite a few girls that do it and they earn a good fucking wage Uh and fair play they should but it's not something I could do just because of the type of person I am. I'm more of an entertainer. I need to like oh, entertain so, and like so have fun with yourself. It. So do you see yourself go down the uh, the porn production or like getting into films? Like if, if you want a definition yeah, of porn in terms of films and videos, would you say that you'd want to be there in like say four to five years or three to four years? How, how, whatever horizon, like in the future. I don't know. I feel like I could definitely. I could definitely do it like a proper like film directed like you know with a good with a good storyline behind it I think it's hilarious I love watching porn I okay. think they're fucking amazing so this is- and I follow so many porn stars <laughs> and I just think what they do is so amazing I, I think it's okay, so, so funny this is the weirdest thing in my head I was like you know what, I, I, I definitely feel like down, if I have to have filmmaking laurels on me, I'd like to have something to do with adult entertainment at some point in my life because I think mm. that's just me dope. Like, not for you know what? That's so funny you say that because I've really got into like editing. I, 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 I never really was into technology and like, you know, all the social medias and stuff. But since being online, I really enjoy like editing and editing my videos and like, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, and when I look, watch porn, I do the exact same thing. I'm like, oh, that's a really, it's a really good camera angle. Um, and I remember I watched like an office gangbang video. I'm like obsessed with gangbangs right now. I think I'm just getting super horny. But like I, I was watching this gangbang video and it was like re- like just certain things. Like they got the 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 phone, like the telephone cord uh-huh. and like wrapped around her face. I was like, is this, is this an Adriana Chechek video? <laughs> is that, was that an Adriana Chechek video by any chance? Like, well, if you want to know, I do have a Pornhub um, profile and you can oh, actually go awesome. on there and see what I've watched. Which is okay. quite cool. Oh, that's lit. I was actually just going to ask you, like, do you have a profile? Do you plan on getting onto that platform? Because that- I have a porn hub. I've put a few things on there. It's a bit difficult because because obviously I have an OnlyFans. Uh-huh. And if I don't want to put stuff on my porn hub because then people wouldn't want my OnlyFans. Do you know what I mean? So I think I'm going to keep my porn hub for now. Just like my creative side, like more of my, maybe mm-hmm. my performer side, fetish side. I don't know. Right. I haven't really decided yet. But I do have one, so let me know if you if you would like that. Ah, fair sure, enough. we'll we'll put that down on the link description for sure. Like follow them on front of that. As long as we don't get banned <laughs> for doing that, I'm fine. And you know, as and to be honest, I think I'd probably put that up on my Instagram as well because they, they can't fucking ban you for doing that on Insta. But yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'll give you a I'll give you a free subscription. Oh, that's such. Thank you. <laughs> it's alternative entertainment, you know, like. <laughs> No, don't you? And that's the thing, like, you've got to, in this industry, you just got to, it's a lot about, you know, scratch your back and I'll scratch yours kind of thing. Oh, that's sure. how you grow. I mean, I, I actually, um, here's the weirdest thing is that I probably watch your content more because I now feel like over this past, the whole time we've been talking, I do feel like we've developed a personal, like, connection as well. So, like, at this point, I'm going to be watching it from, like, hey, I'm supporting a friend. Like, I'm, I'm literally going to be doing it yeah. with that perspective. I'd be like, hey, good for you. You know, you take that dick, you know. You, <laughs> you get it, girl. We, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's really we difficult. There are, there are so many guys that, guys yeah. and girls, but it is, ma- the, 
it is mainly guys that message me and it's just so funny to see the types of guys that are into me and my style and then you you'll always i mean in the strip club online they're everywhere but you're always going to get that guy that just thinks that you're a hoe they're gonna be like okay this girl is a hoe and she's gonna come fuck me are you are you stupid like i'm online you can see that you have to pay for my page but Mm -hmm. yet you're still gonna go into my dms and be like send me a free nude i'm like no like no like if if you if you can't pay for it don't ask for it because I would rather, do you know what, I, I will send a free nude, and I will send free subscriptions, but I'll do it for the people that don't ask for it, and they're just, they want to get to know me, and they want to respect me, and they respect my work, I'm like, hey, I like you, check out my work, and like my stuff, share my stuff, whatever, and it, that's how it should work, not like, mm-hmm. hey girl, send me a free nude, yeah, send me some pussy yeah. pics, I'm like, that's just, no, that sounds like the most Indian attitude ever, like, that's such an Indian thing to do, like, hey, babe, can you send me a free nude? <laughs> like, and you're just like, no, Akash, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And I I love people that are just, A, open-minded to what I do and what so many people do now. And people that, you know, if they don't have money, that's not, it's not necessarily the end of the world. Like, you don't, you don't necessarily need to buy my page to support me. You can mm. share my page. You can like my uh-huh. stuff. You and say hey check this girl out like that's how it works now <laughs> and that's those are the people that i would be like hey have a free nude here's a piece of pic go have a go have a wank on me my treat you know <laughs> i'm looking about it i guess that's, that's a good way to promote yourself you know okay i got a free subscription okay god <laughs> <laughs> I actually wanted to cycle back to the conversation we were having about, uh, you know, prostitution versus girls going back home drunk with a stranger. Uh, mm-hmm. they, like, oh, I'm going to get so much hate for that. I know it. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, no. Nah. No, but actually I was supporting your argument. Uh, but I was studying in Scotland and I heard this rumor. I don't know how far it's true, but uh, some guys were picking up girls from this particular club and then videotaping them and then blackmailing them for, you know, money or whatnot. And they oh, had... Oh, God. Yeah. And I'd imagine that happens so much easier when the girl's absolutely intoxicated, you know, versus somebody who, you know, has yeah. been watching over her and maybe, you know, she's in her senses, she knows what she's doing. I guess that, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's a very interesting argument to see people who find the first thing, the former, like going to the club mm-hmm. acceptable versus uh, something else. Whereas it seems like uh, Dan Bazarian actually spoke about this and he was like, uh, like paying for uh paying for sex is literally one of the most honest transactions you can have because it's like mm-hmm. you get something and the other person gets something as well it's not there's no lies there's no uh subliminal messages or whatever it's just you know so true yeah thing yeah so it's i know there's no i that's why it really upsets me because there are so many people that still think that strippers are you know money grabbing and they're they're like scamming guys and stuff i was like it's the most simple thing you can ask for. You mm-hmm. give me money and I give yeah. you my body. I dance, I have set, whatever it is. It's so fucking simple. It's like, that, and, and I still get it in the club. Like, I, you know, a guy would say to me, oh, they'll be really confused. And they're like, so, wh- so what do I get? I'm like, you get a dance. <laughs> and like, obviously some girls, you know, some girls can make their own prices. Some girls, like me personally, I just say to them I was like look it's it's this much and you get this much time with me and we can go in there we'll have some fun we'll have some drinks like mm-hmm. I'm like it's not yeah. that hard to understand like I'm, I'm not and they still they're still like some of them are really nervous like they think I'm gonna scam them I'm like you give me money and we go over there <laughs> that's it and then we we'll have some fun like oh. I'm a bit curious about this so uh I'm, I'm gonna be very honest I'm actually uh uh, I'm not a guy that I'm not a stripper. I see the whole thing from a very human point of view, but I don't do strip clubs just for the same purpose that um, I'm I'm very weirdly, but I'm super cheap. Okay, and in my head that that didn't make sense, right? I, I'd, I'd go to a strip club in the US and I'd be like, um, this this girl would come. I'd accompany two of my friends, right? And it was hilarious because um, we went to that strip club and there was one dude, so both all three Indian guys. One dude was like, yo. I've been doing this too long, like, these girls don't get me off, whatever. I'm like, cool. That was one guy. 
the second guy probably fell in love with the first girl who came and spoke to him <laughs> and he, he was he was he fell for the like, he just you know what would you call it dude like the boy like yeah, yeah he just fell he was like oh my god yeah he he went cat eyes and um <laughs> That the guy and the girl, like the, the stripper and him, were just talking for a while, and I was just sitting in the corner, like, "Hey, you dance well," and I'm just, I'm, I'm just so out of it. So the girl comes to me and she's like, "Do you want to dance?" And in my head, I'm like, "Do I want to pay twenty bucks for a boner, or would I rather pay fifty bucks to fuck a girl for an hour?" Like, the second option seems to make a lot more sense. So I'm, I'm, I'm a very shitty customer when it comes to you know being in strip clubs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I hate guys like you. So, <laughs> so, so yeah. I'm not going to disagree. I'm, I'm like. Why are you in here then? Get out! <laughs> which is why I don't go to strip clubs. Like, so I don't piss off girls. Like, that's good. I mean, which is why we can I mean, be friends. <laughs> in my head, there's like three types of guys. There's like the watcher. There's the I don't do this, or I have a girlfriend. I'm like, okay. And uh, then there's the guy that will just be like, yeah, okay. And obviously, the best customer, the ones that are like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you'll find that it depends. Again, it depends yeah. how good selling you are. For instance, I'll go over to a guy and I'll be like, "Hey, babe, do you want to dance?" And they're like, "No, I don't do dances." And I'm like, "Okay." But then I'll see some other girl go to him and talk to him, and he'll go for a dance. Like, it, it kind of uh, just depends. What yeah. Kind of, and it also depends what kind of girls guys like. Yeah. I mean, you have to also remember the guys in the UK. They're not as open-minded and they're not as open as like Americans and stuff. That they, they don't want to tell you really? that you're not their type. They'll Wait, really? just say, "No, I'm okay." Wow. I thought I thought like, they both look okay. like that's so cool. You can tell uh, me if you want a big titty, big ass girl. <laughs> that's cool. That's fine. I'll go get her for you. <laughs> I did not know that. I thought I thought both of them progress along the same lines, you know. But that's I nuts. In the UK, like they're more polite, you know. They wouldn't tell. At the end of the day, as long as someone's making money, it's all good because that's how the stripping industry should be. Like you're not going to force. I mean, depends how good of selling you are. I mean, yeah. I'm very like friendly. I'm very like. I'm your mate kind of person. Some girls would be very like dominating, which honestly I wish I could be like that. Some girls just walk up to them and they're like, "Hey, babe, you go for it." <laughs> and then you just see the guy get up and like, "Okay." I'm like, oh, I do like that. I'm like, "Hey, so what do you do?" And I do this, da, 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 da. and I become like their best friend by the end of the night. <laughs> you know, that's the thing that I did. Like, I was just sitting and having a damn good conversation, but it's just something about the dance that didn't just. For the simple fact that at some point I just went like feet, like I don't want to go there and waste someone's time, you know, like so that was my pretty much first and only strip club thing because I realized going there and just not doing anything is disrespectful to the mm-hmm. people who work there. So, like, yeah, when when that's people- really good actually, and you yeah. know what, like you're gonna get, get say like a stag do, stag do's. Honestly, in my opinion, I fucking hate stag do's because it's a very mixed bag of people, and they can either be really good and like really like. They'll pay and they'll go for dances and they'll do like stage shows and stuff. Or they might be like really shy and like half of them will be like, my wife can't find out about this. Yeah. And then the other half, the half are just like mental. Or they're all just really drunk and rowdy like, oh, I love, 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 love. Yeah. Um, But like, I just feel like if, if, if you don't want to go, if you don't feel like you're going to dance, don't go. But if you, if you have to go, like part of a stag do or whatever, just, just be respectful. Understand that it is our job. And if you've got some cash, if you've got just a fiver, like fiver, honestly, it's it's it might be a lot of money to some people, but it's just a respectful, like I don't know, give. A- I was just wondering, Verity, uh, do girls come in like a bachelor, bachelorette, um, a hen party? You know, do they come? Yeah, in we do party? actually. We do. We do get quite a few um, girl groups. I mean, yeah. sometimes it depends. Like sometimes. I mean, obviously, you have to understand that strip clubs are going to be the last club open. So if yeah. you're out with your friends and you're not done drinking or whatever, like, usually they'll come to the strip club. That's why I don't really like to work on weekends because I don't really like those type of people. Yeah. But, yeah, we do get a lot of, like, bachelorettes, like, either, like, lesbians getting married or just girls just wanting to go to a strip club because there aren't any, like, male strip clubs, which is really sad. No way. And... Yeah. I would love, love to have my own strip club one day, and I want like an all type strip club. Right. Boys, girls, trans, like whatever you want, it's in there. Okay. Right? So if you ever need a brown dude, uh, just to add a little exotic flavor, <laughs> and if you have a speaker, you know where to find one. Just you know, uh, help him out, get, get get him a ticket, and then, oh, no. and then I, and I, and I'll fly right and teach me how to pull down. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll make we'll make we'll make my country great again. You know, <laughs> just. <laughs> We'll get you a visa, I'm sure. It'll be good. 
for sure. I'll supply the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Daksha, that'll be a new high for Daksha. You know, Nikhil dancing with Daksha's like guitar riffs. That that that'll be a story to tell. You know. Yeah, I'm uh, sorry. For one, day. <laughs> one day. One day. Yeah. No, it is yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy life. Honestly, I love being a stripper. It has its down days. You know, when you don't earn the money you want to earn, and like. I'm not saying it's it's perfect all the time. I mean, I've definitely had some pretty bad arguments in the club. Uh-huh. Um, I've definitely had some bad experiences in the club. But I think that's just with with every job, you know, you're gonna have a shit time as well as a good time. Yeah, I mean, like once you use that to catapult your career into, say, porn, if you ever want to get into it, like you know, I had this very very crazy thing. So the, yeah, I'm pretty sure you've heard of fake taxi, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, So I, I, I find I find the story hilarious. Like honestly, I've just watched like this. There are a bunch of times I've just gone through fake taxi videos to watch the first five minutes. Go like the story is freaking intriguing. Like <laughs> it's ingenious. It's a fucking genius idea. I'm so angry. I didn't think of it first. I think it's and, so and, funny. And the funny thing is that the guy who runs the fake taxi thing. Right? So when that happened, um. I ended up hitting the guy up, right? And he was just—he just put up a story saying, "Hey, if you're in Czech Republic or Prague, just uh, hit me up and let's go get drinks." And I was like, "Mate, I wish, but like, if you ever come to Dubai, you know, I'm your guy, right?" And the guy just—I <laughs> was, I was thinking, I'm like, you know what? This dude seems really open, and I wanted to ask you, considering I think Big Taxi is one of the biggest houses of, uh, or one of the biggest producers in the UK currently, mm-hmm. like in terms of rating, etc. Because all the other top producers are. Uh, in the US, uh, yeah. have you have you ever considered trying to get a break over there? Because there are a lot of starlets that come out, you know, through Fake Taxi. You know, I don't know. I feel like because I've only just I've only just dipped my toe into the online stuff. Like I am, mm-hmm. thankfully, I'm doing very well from it. But I want to I want to see where it goes organically. Okay. I want to see where it leads me. But I I love watching stuff like that, and I I think that is such an ingenious idea, and it completely blew up because it's it's really something that English people especially exactly. love to see because it's so silly and it's so like it's just so funny. Yeah. Um, but it's definitely I don't know like the way I see it is if I was going to do something like that again, I want to do it off my own back. Like I would I would want to do my own thing, and I'd employ my own people to come and. And do mine so, instead of joining something else. I don't so know. Would you want to be like? Uh, would you like kind of want to be like Lena? If you've heard of Lena the Plug, uh, Adam Twenty Two. Yeah, I love Lena yeah. the Plug. She's really funny. So uh, yeah, and she's like you know she gets into that entertainment side. She's not. I don't think she's signed. She she's kind of with Vixen, but like she's a Vixen angel, but she's not. You know, she doesn't. Yeah, act, it, she doesn't act in any of the productions, but she's still. Yeah, like, it's more like she is. She is who she is, and people. Will have exactly. Her, so so is that something that you want to do? Yeah, that's yeah. Because because I'm, I didn't even mean for it to take this turn, really. Uh-huh. But I mean, I've got into sloshing, and for those who don't know what sloshing is, it's like it's food basically. So I might put like, I mean, if you've seen my page, I put like beans all over me. I don't know why it's always beans. Explain. It's always beans. Explain beans. something. Why was the? Because I remember seeing the story. Why did it go from beans to tomatoes to piss? What was this doing in that? I don't understand. <laughs> and why? <laughs> who well, asked? My, my Instagram live. Yeah, like who asked for piss with tomatoes? Like, I cracked up when I saw that story. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I kind of like based it on people's ideas and also what my friends were like suggesting as well. And I was like. Well, I need like ten things because I wanted to take. I no, I'm not gonna lie. I'm sorry, Karel, but I completely like stole his idea. And I had obviously you saw I had uh, words. Yeah, I saw, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so food fight. I'll have like ten things, and I'll have ten things. And I was like, well, what should I have? I mean, beans, obviously, because because of Karel's video. Um, and then I had like peas, and then and then I it just escalated to like cereal, and and just I don't know. I just found what I was in my cupboard, to be honest. But That's not going to be my show every week. Like that would get boring. So you could, you could honestly Next just week. put some sound of music behind and go like tomato space and um and beans. These are a few of my favorite things and just you know. Have a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to think about that. Just so I have fun. a bunch of people just. Oh, damn it! Where were you last week? Um, you know, I, I'm I'm going to give you all sorts of production ideas. You know, like we uh, and like if you're an interior, we like you. If you want some really grunge music, just hit Dakshi up and <laughs> do the music up and guitar. Yeah, I'm like send it over to you. 
people don't understand the fucking work behind what I do and what so many girls do. Like I am doing, obviously I'm on my own right now because I don't have, I don't have the ability to go around my friend's house, you know? Mm -hmm. So I have to be the cameraman. I have to be the DJ. I have to be the the porn star. I have to be the editor. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, it's so hard. I have so many things to do. Like if you go on my Instagram, right? (laughs) I thought it was a really good idea. I was like, I want to do a lockdown style photo shoot. And I was like, okay, I have a straight jacket. Basically, yeah. I used to be a magician's assistant and I have a straight jacket. Okay, anyway, right. so I put on my straight jacket <laughs> and it has no, I, I have no free hands, right? So I was like, oh, fuck, how am I going to take this photo? So what I did was I, I walked over and I pressed it with my nose and then I gave myself a 10 second timer to go and sit back and then like pose for the picture. Uh-huh. Oh and my I'm goodness. To do that, like, 20 times just to get one fucking shot (sighs) you know i feel like a clown because i did that uh, very similar thing so i'm currently using uh, a tripod to like record the whole thing it's it's it's, i'm recording the thing on my phone yeah me too yeah (laughs) i just just realized this two days ago when i remove there's a detachable like um bluetooth remote that you can click and it clicks for you i had that i didn't know i lost it (laughs) I, i didn't know that and the whole of last year when i was traveling I used to put that, I used to do the same thing. Like, I felt like a clown because people would look at me, set a 10 second timer, look up over there, and they're just like, what <laughs> is this guy doing? <laughs> I know, I did the same thing. I only got my tripod in remote. I need to go and get another remote because I, I lose everything and I've lost it. But it is like this big, so. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I need the little remote so then I can have it inside the straight jacket when I'm taking the photo. So I'm like tearing the place apart trying to find this fucking remote. And I was like, so I'm like, like this. And I'm like, <laughs> Uh, you, can, you can see, you can see a happy face, and then you can see the pain on that face when when you have to stand there and go through that shit twenty times, just <laughs> like the king. Yeah, some of the photos when I when I flip through, I like I can edit pretty well, but some of the photos there's like this vein popping out of my head because I'm like <laughs> like trying to get a nice photo. <laughs> I actually have a question. How did you get in the straight jacket? Like, um, it, it was really difficult because all the buckles are at the back. Yeah. So I kind of like I did some shots with the buckles at the front because I was like, well, I can just do it up myself. Yeah. But luckily, because I'm so small, I did the buckles up and then I just kind of like squeezed into it. Oh my, my goodness! Arms. And then I did that. I was so sweaty that day. Oh that my god! So much work. Hopefully. Uh, like when you go out, like when you used to go clubbing in the UK. Uh, was it what was it like like you know do you tell people your profession and were they like absolutely mind blown because that's mm-hmm. what um, I don't know like I didn't I don't really like clubbing like if I did tell people what I do it's yeah. a mixed bag of, of responses I mean some people are like oh that's pretty cool <laughs> some people are like you know they don't say it but they assume you're a hoe and that you're gonna go home with them and I'm like no 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 yeah. um it, it kind of depends really like to be honest I probably I get more negativity from boys than girls I mean recently I've had a lot of negativity from girls but just from my online stuff um but from the yeah. point it's probably just trying to neg like you know just try negging you know bring you down so I don't know I think so I think I think there are just still so many guys that are a bit threatened by sex workers mm-hmm. um or people just don't know how to react to it really like i think a lot of guys get nervous and that's when they either assume that you're just going to go and fuck them because that's what you do and it's not what i do um because as soon as you say the word sex it's you're automatically seen assume that it's with them and you're like no it's not calm down put it back in your pants take if you could work and put out a video with your top three favorite adult performers who would they be Ooh. I don't know. Um, <laughs> for some reason, this guy comes to mind, and I mean, he—I don't think he's any in any porn films, but he's he's like quite well known on Twitter. Anyway, I'll send him to you. But he's called Naked Martin. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of him? No, but the name is just hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so he's obviously from the UK because a name like that is just ridiculous. I love him so much. He's basically like a really old guy. Like, well, not really old. Sorry, Martin. Sorry, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> 
he's older than me, which is very old. Um, and he's he's got like tattoos, and he's basically he's naked Martin, and he'll like stand up and he'll just like like wiggle his dick around, and like he's just he's so funny. But I just like weird weird looking people, and he's he's not the best looking. Like he wouldn't be like your first pick of a porn star, but uh -huh. he's one of my favorites. And I am gonna try and see if me and him can do something together one day. Who's two and three? Oh, I don't know. I'm really bad with names. I'm like, I don't want to okay, say someone's you, you name. You said you watch. You said you watch a lot of porn. There's gonna be like I can name you three people. Like, and I'm not even. I'm not even a part of the industry, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure you can. I'm very new at this. Stop picking on me. I'm <laughs> good. I'm, I wish I did more research before this fucking podca podcast. I mean, yeah. um, <laughs> porn cast. We should call it that. Porn cast. Oh <laughs> yes, we're doing that. We are. Oh my goodness, Betty, you're a genius. Let's go. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Like, Dick, um, oh, what's her name that was on Kareel's show? I like her because she's so cute. Who, the alley uh, cat girl? What's her oh. name? Is it Ellen? No, not Blair. Blair, Will Blair Williams. Blair Williams. No, the one that has the butt plug in her. Yeah, that's, that's Blair Williams. She, she, oh my goodness. She, oh. Blair Williams, yeah. Um, the, the really curvy girl, right? Like, the one who's like super thick. And then... No, 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 not her. I like her. She's hilarious, actually. Yeah. Um, she's the one with the. She's comment. the one with the big titties, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just gonna. Say that. Yeah. Okay. Then, oh, she's you mean Jane? Uh, Jane Wild, the other one. Yeah, that's the yeah. one. She's so cute uh -huh. because I really like the fact that she's just her. Like she's really natural. Like you know, she's yeah. not. She's not got big tits, and she's not got a big bum. Like me, I'm really small. Like I'm a size four, and I'm like five foot. And I guess I could play the kind of like innocent girl, but then I have tattoos and stuff. So, like, I don't know. I just I I really like girls that just have that natural look about them. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, who's the other girl, Blair? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She can be. She can be my number two. Ah, She's funny. Her good. page is hilarious. Like, that's what I want to do. Like, I want to make it funny. Like everything I do, I want it to be like a bit of a joke, like Kirill and and of stuff course, he yeah. does. Like, yeah. because. Sex is cool, and sex is, is, you know, it is what it is, but I feel like it shouldn't be a serious thing, you know? Oh, yeah. Because it, it's, it should be funny, in my, in my opinion, because, you know, when you see the, the, the porn videos, and they're, they're, like, so cheesy, and I fucking love how cheesy they are, and um, I actually filmed a kind of porn video with my friend. I ad actually edited it pretty well for my first amateur porn video. Mm -hmm. Um it's not out anywhere right now because we weren't really sure if we wanted to like release it or anything but it is available to buy if anyone wants to buy it but um yeah i'm kind of hol holding that to my chest for a little while that's sweet hey best of luck in that release drug use what's like do you what's what do you do you like smoking weed or do you do you drink or what's your take on the um to be honest, i didn't actually do much until because i was in the circus i didn't do anything i used to have uh -huh. like one drink at christmas that was like me oh geez okay um, like my ex was like teetotal kind of guy so he was like you're not allowed to do any of these things and i was like really what like, like oh my goodness but i know yeah. i was like 16 and he was like 30 so there was like a real control issue right there okay. and yeah. I was, like, okay i won't do it which is probably why i do what i do now because i'm like i'm gonna do anything i'm gonna do what i want i'm gonna get my pussy out and put Sparklers inside it. Ha ha. I'm um, happy Diwali. <laughs> you, you really need to do that. You've got to do that. You've got to really, yeah, please, for my sake, at the end of this year. Is it? Is it soon? Uh, it's, no, it's in, the, it's in like October. And I'd, I'd okay, love it fine, if you fine. could do that and say happy Diwali. And, <laughs> and I promise you I will share that on every platform that I can. And okay. <laughs> you've got to remind me. I'll film it soon. So then you've got it. You've got it to use when, when the time comes. Make go comes. viral because that'd be freaking amazing. Um, yeah. Is it like offensive if I wear like a sari or something? I think that just makes it a, like 10 times yeah. harder. Like, I mean, that's like, like, like you're if gonna we're going to do it, it needs to yeah. be like, a viral thing like people are yes. going to be so shocked like, you, know, everyone's like, gonna think, you can if you put on a sari that's every indian guy's dream that they can't get from back home so you're kind of just catering to that and that'd just be and i honestly i would just have a laugh from the whole thing like i love seeing <laughs> like that just just to share and have a laugh about it you know that's really good i mean to be fair like i feel i'm one of those people where i'm so outspoken and i'm probably just so ignorant 
and I end up saying stuff and I think I offend way too many people no, than no. I, I should. <laughs> and, um, and I just think of these crazy things. I'm like, should I really be doing this? <laughs> like the reason I got so much hate from this, this guy's page on Swarms Live, um, because I went on live and I was stoned out of my fucking head. Because <laughs> I was so nervous and I was like, <laughs> and then I like drank loads of like vodka as well. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then at the end of the video, like, um, you know, we have the NHS here, right? The healthcare uh -huh. system. Mm -hmm. And obviously up. everything going on with Corona. And he was, the swarms was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, man, I'm <laughs> fine. I've got weed. I don't need anything else. Fuck the NHS. <laughs> and that blew up. Like people were like, what did you say? How dare you say that? So I'm like, oh God, I just said one thing and then I slipped out. But, you have um, a follow up to that where you're like clapping for the NHS. You know, but it's your Like on the bridge, and that's the stupidest thing that you could do. Like, you know, I mean, it's always. Right? Like, I'd like, say one thing, but then thousands of people are stood on fucking Westminster <laughs> Bridge, like this close from each other, like. Fucking <laughs> jeez. No. Well done. Wait, I'm I, doing no harm in my home. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, uh, following that, following all the fucking hate I got, I did a video called Clapping for the NHS, but not with my hands. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's freaking yeah. genius. No, um, I, I, but but you know, hey, something, hate, so. but something just came to mind, right? The name Brad Doll for a second, like I don't know about you, Daksha, but I, it seems like something like an innocent seventh or eighth grader might put their name up on Snapchat <laughs> as, and they just be like, "Hey, here's my Snapchat." Like you know, I'd be like, "Hey, my name's Cool Nikhil on Nikhil Rocks on Nikhil the Killer," and then they've got like, "Yeah, Brad Doll." I'd be like, "Yeah, that seems like an innocent enough page. Fair enough. Let's go." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then, that's what I want. I want like to confuse the hell out of people. Like, if you go on my Instagram, my profile picture is, is me with it with a horse head on my head. Yeah, like yeah, like Bojack Horsewoman. Just bestiality. Happy yeah. Right. Um. So on that note, uh, I just want to say thank you so much, Verity, for taking your time out and uh, joining us. It was an excellent conversation, and thank thanks you. to you, yeah. I've managed. I've taken a huge thing off my bucket list and i wish you nothing but the best you're you're an amazing person we love talking thank to you thank you you um, too in touch. and thank you so much best of luck and we'll see you guys on the next episode